and go very slow to start. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Gabriel here with Natural Whetstone Sharpening. And today I'm gonna to show you guys a little straight razor refresh on this absolutely lovely, huge block of Wyoming Jade. This is a stone that I harvested after many weeks of searching out in the fields of Wyoming. And I'm not kidding when I say that I searched for weeks and weeks before I found this stone. So Jade is a stone that's really renowned for how dense and hard and fine it is. And that lends it to be an absolutely incredible sharpening stone. Today I'm honing a straight razor. And this razor was just starting to tug on my last couple shaves. So when your razor is starting to pull, here's how you refresh it when your strop is no longer cutting it. So just very gently back and forth. I'm gonna hone until I feel my razor starting to stick to the stone. Now, jade can be polished to a mirror level finish, but this stone I have sanded to about 325 grit, and then I've sharpened on it quite a lot and let the surface load with steel. And this allows the stone to cut steel quickly, but also polish very fine. there's that sticky feeling that you get. Uh, a final honing stone really only needs to remove just a little bit of metal. The cool thing about really dense stones like jade is that if the surface is sanded rough, it'll actually sharpen rough. So if I needed to do a lot more metal removal, I could use a surface prep like 80 grit or 120 grit. But today I'm using this semi-fine preparation that's been loaded with steel. So it actually acts ultra fine, like 30,000 grit or beyond approximately. And that's a pretty fair ballpark because that's about as high of a polish as this stone can take if you buff it with a half micron compound of diamond grit or chromium oxide. It'll get a really nice mirror shine Kind of like this corner of the stone over here. You can see that it's got that really, really glassy finish to it. Jade is way harder than steel, so it stays dead flat when you sharpen. And it's an ultra hard, very grit rich stone. So you never have to worry about flattening it again, and you can't gouge into it. So this lends for a surgical level of finish on this razor. So now that I've touched on the finishing stone, I'm gonna use this old school barber straw. The back is flax linen, and the front is a horse shell hide. The brand is Red Imp. If you can score one of these on eBay and clean it up, it's one of the best straws you can get. So. Quick tip on stropping, always set your razor down spine first, then lower the blade and move away from the blade only. Go slow. But not this slow, that's too slow. You want a little bit of friction. Before you go to the strop, you want to make sure that your razor is popping arm hair nicely. After the strop, it should be able to shave arm hair above the skin. So that's called tree topping. And when your razor can tree top arm hair like that, you know that it's nice and sharp. All right, now that we've 
got our razor super sharp and ready to shave. Let's do a quick beard preparation. So I've got this badger brush. It's silver tip grade. Some guys like a brush that's a bit rougher, so you could also try boar bristle. And I've got Katie's Bubbles La Marche de Rossage. I'm probably totally butchering that because I don't speak French. Aromatic aquatic scent. This is my favorite shave soap. I've used the heck out of it for the last two years. And this is really probably the most economical way to use a shaving cream. Shaving cream cans just don't last that long. And then you're, you know, buying tons of cans and throwing them away. And honestly, soap is the way to go. I've found that this is my preferred way to do it. And exfoliation and beard prep with the brush really is the best. So we want hot water, wet your brush, squeeze out the extra. You don't need a ton of water. You just need just a little bit. Load your brush. You can just mix it in the bowl like so, and you want it nice and thick. And I go like this to try to knock out any air bubbles. You want your lather to be very protective and slick because the razor is very sharp. I recommend a microfiber towel or some other towel to keep on hand because you don't want your fingers slippery. So you really wanna get your hand nice and dry. And then heat up your razor blade. Again, not scalding hot, but pretty hot. Two fingers on either side of the tang, like so. And go very slow to start. With your opposite hand, reach up and stretch your skin. And make very gentle strokes. The weight of the razor is what does all the work. I blow a little bit of air into my cheek to prevent any hollows. And when I'm wiping my razor off, I go backwards away from the edge only. You wanna keep the razor at a low angle to your face. And if your razor is tugging, then sharpen it some more because it should be effortless. That's how you know your razor is sharp enough. I keep maybe two spine widths of angle, no more, no less. Too steep and you're gonna cut yourself, too shallow and you're not shaving the hair off right at the skin. You want to be careful when you rinse your razor that you're looking at the sink. You don't want to hit your edge on the sink. So navigating the upper part of the face is the easiest. And it gets a little trickier when you come to your jawline. So you'll notice that I stopped where my jawline begins. Watch what happens now if I pull my skin and I really exaggerate how much I pull it. I can actually pull the skin up onto my, uh, my jawbone and that helps me not have to shave at an awkward angle. And slit my own throat.
The chin is tricky and it just takes practice. Go slow and you won't cut yourself. You may find that it helps to switch hands. It's very, very light, gentle strokes. The razor does all the work. Now I'm onto the neck. So for this, I just simply look up and follow the grain direction to the best of your ability. Earlobes and behind the jaw are where I've cut myself the most, so just take extra caution and try to turn your head and flatten your skin, and that'll help you have even surface to go over. There you have it. That's your basic straight razor shave. Just remember that when you're wiping your razor, only ever go away from the edge. And think beard reduction. If you don't get it all in the first pass, that's okay. Just go slow and steady and take the most care with when you first set your angle and first touch to your skin. I find that straight razor shaving is very gentle on my face because the edge is so keen and it gives very minimal irritation And with a little bit of practice, you won't cut yourself. So there you have it. That's the basics of how I straight razor shave. For razor aftercare, you want to ensure that your blade is totally dry and then apply a light layer of mineral oil. And as long as you take care of your blade, and use good sharpening stones and good stropping technique, one straight razor will take care of you for the rest of your life. And with discipline and practice, you won't be afraid of it anymore. On your first shave, you might feel a little shaky and a little nervous, and that's normal, just go extra slow. And if your lather starts to go dry, re-lather mid-shave, and it will really help you. I find that straight razor shaving is very gentle on my face, so often I just use cold water. But today I'm gonna to use a little aftershave. So I've got the uh, matching one to my soap, and I'm just gonna put a little cold water on my face first. Thanks for watching, and if you made it to the end of this video and you're interested in learning more about sharpening, then check out my website, naturalwhetstonesharpening.com. Whetstone is W-H-E-T. It's Old English for working stone. And if this video helped you guys, please give me a subscribe and like this video. Let's see if we can get this video to 50 likes. As always, if you guys enjoy this content, feel free to share it with your friends. And if you're just getting started straight razor shaving, drop me a comment down below and let me know what you guys are struggling with, what you need help with, and if there's something in specific that I can help teach you guys in the next sharpening video. And there's also a Facebook community group, Wild Whetstones. So check us out, we're 7,600 members strong. I've been selling the sharpening stones that I've been making for about hmm, six years now. And we just broke a thousand orders on the website. So again, come check out the Facebook community group. Feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you like this kind of content. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay sharp, peace, power.